Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be here at the virtual AdmiTech Global Summit. And I am pleased to present to you today on a year in review on emerging data and advances in prostate cancer screening. These are my funding and my disclosures. So as we know from the Swedish Göteborg One trial, we know that regular PSA screening reduces prostate cancer mortality by about 30% at 22 years of follow-up. What we also know is that the number needed to screen and the number needed to diagnose become more favorable with longer follow-up. So you can see the longer time goes, the smaller these numbers become. What's also was interesting to see in the past year was this recent paper from the CAP trial in the UK that randomized men to only a single PSA test, but that was also associated with a reduction in prostate cancer mortality. Not as much, but about 8% at 15 years. What about DRE? Well, it doesn't have a very good diagnostic value as a screening test. In fact, it's notably low. And we know this from the German probase trial at DKFZ led by Professor Peter Albers that shows that the cancer detection rate is very low in this young uh, population of men with using DRE as a screening test. And that's also confirmed in a recent systematic review. But do we use DRE as part of a clinical workup for men with an elevated PSA? Well, definitely, yes. Yes. The strongest marker we have for prostate cancer and prognostication of lethal prostate cancer is still the PSA test. It is an exceptionally strong marker of future risk of lethal disease, and this is from the MELMA trial. And we've also conversely shown that if a man is 60 and the PSA is less than one, no further screening is recommended because the risk is so low of metastatic disease during 25 years of follow-up. So the greatest utility of rescreen is for men with PSA above 2 at 60. So focusing rescreening in those men is beneficial. If we stop screening, as happened a couple of years ago when the USPSTF recommended against PSA screening, we now see a declining death rate from prostate cancer that has actually leveled off in the wake of recommendations against PSA screening. So we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. And in contrast, we have a lot of opportunistic screening all over the world. And actually, this absence of a population-based screening program have led to high rates of testing with limited benefits and clear medical harm, including inequities. And this is a piece that we recently wrote together in the BMJ. We have also recently worked with the Prostate Cancer Foundation to develop a guideline for a screening for a black man, as these men have an increased risk of both incidence and early onset and metastatic disease and prostate cancer mortality. So together with this group, we reviewed the evidence and put together a guideline recommending that screening should start between 40 and 45 and strongly considering annual screening for black men in the U.S. What's also interesting is all the initiatives that you will hear about at this uh, global summit meeting. And this includes the Praise You Consortium in the EU. So we have now moved from designing uh, screening trials to actually implementing such trials in clinical practice. And this was really prompted by this un increasing burden of disease and uneven rollout of unorganized testing in Europe. And this initiative is led by Professor Han van Boppel and Professor Monique Ropol and is co-funded by the European Union and coordinated by the EAU. And here's an example of a risk stratified prostate cancer screening algorithm that is proposed by the PRAISU consortium. And you can see how PSA is used as the baseline followed by risk stratification and MRI, and then further determining treatment according to risk. One way of stratifying risk is to use risk calculators. And here's an example of the ERSBC risk calculator. And you can enter information about MRI, PSA, previous biopsy, and DRE, and also including volume, man's age, and the PIRAT score. And that gives the man a personalized and risk of having high-grade disease at prostate biopsy, which can help determine the need for biopsy. In the past, we used to also only have the PSA test, but now there's been an explosion of new biomarkers on the market. And so these can also be used as adjuncts before determining the need for MRI or biopsy. 
We also know that screening at early age can benefit people who have risk factors, which include African ancestry, family history, and genetic predisposition. Uh, there's also a lot of research on polygenic risk scores that can add to our risk stratification. And what's really been the game changer is MRI. And so a recent systematic review of all these trials that have emerged over the past year really supports integrating MRI in screening to improve the balance between benefits and harms. And so using pre-biopsy MRI really maintains the detection of clinically significant disease and reduces overdiagnosis and unnecessary biopsies. And so if you look at the emerging trials that have either been conducted or are currently ongoing in 2024, all of these trials are based on risk stratification, and you can see most of them include MRI. Recently, the Göteborg 2 trial showed that targeted biopsy to MRI suspicious lesions versus systematic biopsy halved the risk of overdiagnosis and maintained the detection of clinically significant disease. And here you can see how it reduces insignificant disease and keeps the detection of significant disease. This paper just came out a couple of days ago, which showed then from also from the Otterbock trial that after four years of meeting biopsy in men with negative MRI, eliminated overdiagnosis by 50%, and the associated risk of having incurable disease, whereas an interval cancer was very low. So it's an interesting paper showing what happens when you continue to screen these men. But I also like to say that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So for this concept of pre biopsy MRI to be successful, we really need access to high quality scanners, standardized protocols, and high quality targeted biopsies, because we currently have a very high proportion of indeterminate MRI, and this depends on the reader experience and central review is really important. We're doing a lot of scans and a lot of unproductive biopsies with a high variability. And one area to improve this is really to increase the accuracy by having a second reading done by an expert radiologist. And this is also an example from the probase trial, where you can see that expert readers had a higher AUC than local readers. Another really interesting application is to incorporate AI or artificial intelligence and using AI augmented interpretation of prostate MRI to really advance health equity and reduce disparities in outcomes by having the computer assist with the interpreting of the MRI. Moving forward in terms of risk assessment, uh, combining PSA with 4K score and MRI could also improve the detection of high-grade disease and reduce overdiagnosis. You can see at each stage you can eliminate the need for men to further go down the chain of clinical workup, and then you can have a more precise targeting of high-grade disease and reduce overdiagnosis. And here's another example from the Göteborg 2 trial where also using the 4K score improved risk stratification before MRI. And notably, it was really the high negative predictive value of 99%. And this also reduced the number of MRIs and, and biopsies. Similarly, the Stockholm 3 test followed by MRI also improved the specificity. And here you can see if you zoom in that you really reduce biopsy procedures and also overdiagnosis while still keeping the detection of high grade disease. And finally, no talk about screening can end without mentioning active surveillance for low risk disease, because that is the major harm with screening that we risk finding cancers that don't need immediate treatment. So active surveillance is now the preferred care option for men with low risk localized prostate cancer. So screening should always be coupled with active surveillance for low risk. So thank you very much.